So in continuing with assignment five, let's just quickly review. We are doing a spot illustration, a free floating image that can be definitely more detailed and specific than a logo should be, but it's, we still want to make it as versatile as possible. That is the strength of digital art so that it can be a sticker. It can be a t-shirt design. It can scale to different sizes. It can go on a big poster or a billboard. And in the next project, we're going to be designing text to go with it, right? And we have to do three phases here. You can see them on the sides. We have to do our sketch, our clean line art, which we're going to do as a vector, whether we turn it into a vector from a raster file or whether we create it as a vector. Those are our different options for what's called digital inking. And then today I'm going to get into how we add color to it, right? And color, this is called digital coloring. This goes behind the line art, right? But then I have two examples here. Wish I can zoom in on them, but we'll see them in the next next page of the unit. So this first example, you have the sketch. The sketch can be really blurry, it's rasterized, then beautifully clean line art, right? Either done as a high resolution raster file that then is vectorized, or done with the blob brush and illustrator as a vector. Notice this line art has varied line weight. So the lines go thin to thick. But in the final, where there, there is color added, you'll notice that the black lines have been changed to these blue lines, right? So that's an option we have as well. Even though it's digital coloring and we're coloring behind the lines, we can also change the color of the lines and we can work on top of them. And then this one, this has a more animation basis. So the line weight is very clean, very thin, and all uniform. So this uses the same line weight for all of it. And then the color is just dropped behind those lines. And here they're kept black, like is usually the case in animation. So whether you're using varied line weights or a fixed line weight, it's up to you. You can also add kind of shading effects, but they're not with gray tones. They're going to be with solid black ink, either through hatching or through stippling or just keeping everything clean and graphic. Stippling is using dots. So dots of pure ink to add texture, to add the illusion of tone, right? All right, so this is where we, we were last class. I had my sketch. I started making my, my digital line art. I was doing it in Illustrator with this tool called the Blob Brush, right? You'll find it underneath the paintbrush tool. We do not use the paintbrush tool because the paintbrush tool uses a stroke. We don't want strokes. We want the blob brush tool, which is the tool that if you double click on it, you can set whether it's smoother or more accurate. You can set whether it's fixed or pressure sensitive with your tablet. So I'll review if it's pressure sensitive. You want to set your variation to the same size as your size. And then you can touch really lightly and it will be really thin. And then you can touch harder and harder with pressure and it will be thicker and thicker, right? So that's what the blob brush can do when it's pressure sensitive and smooth, very clean, very nice. But I'm using a fixed line weight just because I had all these twists and turns. So, whoops, so this line weight is always going to be the same no matter how hard I press. And you can always work between the two of them. Now, the beauty of vectors is that they can individually be selected, like that lone stroke, and then modified, kind of composited with, right, if I wanted to bring these two together, and make that into one line, what would I do? So I have this vector here, I have this vector here. If I select them both and overlap them, I can use the Pathfinder tool under Window, Pathfinder, and I can merge them. So now they're clean. Then I can also use my other favorite tool. I'm just going to work between these two tools, both under the paintbrush, the blob brush and the pencil tool. The pencil tool allows me, once I see the anchor points, just to be able to smooth it out any weirdness, right? 
because you will have weirdness when you're painting with vectors. You'll have things that overshoot, just like you will with traditional ink. So then I use the pencil tool to kind of redraw those edges, smooth them out. You can double click on the pencil tool and set it to be either more smooth or accurate. And I push that all the way to smooth because that's really the main way I use it. Now this is not a logo. You do not need to smooth out every anchor point and make it just absolute perfection. But something that often happens when we digitally ink is we overshoot. You know, in doing a circle like this, there's a little blob at the end, just like with a traditional inking pen that you might smooth over. Uh, I drew through with this line, and I don't want that to be to be there. I want this to be kind of the, the elbow guard or gauntlet. So what I'm going to do whoops, is I'm going to use the pencil tool to smooth that out, but you can only modify with the pencil tool the shapes that are there. So I need to make a break in this. So the only other tool you'll ever need is the eraser in digital inking. If you double click on the eraser, you can set the size. I tend to make it quite small and pressure sensitive. And that way I can just make a little cut right there in the vector. And then I can use my pencil tool and I can redraw all of this, just this inside line. So that that's not even there. Good morning. And then if I wanted the gauntlet to have a little bit more impact on this outside line, I would select it, use the small selection tool, then the pencil tool, and then I can redraw it and put a little bump there. And I can redraw the inside of this, this elbow guard as well, give it a little bit more space on the inside. So this is my preferred way of digital inking within Illustrator because it gives you so much control and it makes everything nice and clean. Which is the intention when you're inking. So again, you, you can use the blob brush, but when you get little oddities that you want to fix, you can use the pencil tool. Once you see the anchor points, you can kind of just redraw the edge like magic scissors, cutting it out. Right. Other advantages of inking with Illustrator is I can use the blob brush, but it's really hard to draw perfectly straight lines. So for this sword blade, if I just start here, even though I have smooth on, and try to draw a perfectly straight line, actually I did a pretty good job. But let's say you didn't do that. You can hold down shift, and you can draw a perfectly straight line. Shift will lock it onto that vertical horizon. Then I can select it, right, just like I did before. I can use the large selection tool to transform it, to get to rotate it, to move it. So this is a, get the angle right. This is now a perfectly straight ink line that I can place exactly where I want it. Looks good. And with the large selection tool, I can also distort it, shrink it, get it exactly where I want it. And then I'll go back to the blob brush tool. And with the blob brush tool, even though this is a separate vector, the blob brush tool will combine with this automatically, will merge with this automatically as soon as I start. So now this is all one vector. That's what's wonderful. So make that curve. It's a little too thin. Command Z, try again. And you can see how much my hand shakes, but with smoothness on, doesn't matter. And then if there's any weirdness at the top, if I want that to, to smooth together, what do I do? I select it with the small selection tool. I go to my pencil tool and I redraw that outside edge. 
Remember, as fill paths, every line has an inside edge and an outside edge. That's why we use the, the blob brush, not the paintbrush. So to show you the difference, if I use the paintbrush tool, which I do not recommend, what it does is it makes a stroke. And that stroke is always going to be the same on the outside. So I can change the width of the stroke under properties, right? But I can't control a lot about it. So when I change directions like this, it's always going to be really blobby <laughs> because it's always just outputting pixels on each side of the stroke or shapes. So that's why we don't use the paintbrush. It is a stroke tool. Instead, we use the blob brush, which gives us a lot more control. And now I can do kind of angles, have variations. And then when I select it, you can see that I can control both sides of the ink. So it's like a puddle of ink rather than just a line that grows. OK. So continuing with the blob brush. Almost all done. You can see the top of the eyeball here. The, the head is usually the focal point of the character, right? And then the eyes are the focal point of the head. So if you're going to clean up anything, it should probably be the eyes. I just use my pencil tool to clean that up. All right, so thinking about the deadline, right? Using the tools. I just want to find the lines I still need, and I'm trying to contain them. And that will make it easier to color later. This is Unit 11, Assignment 5. And all I have left are these little spiky things, which I think help the composition. It's called a spot illustration. Now you want to take enough time on your line art that you're happy with it because when we add color, the color is going to add to and support what we do, but it's not going to fix or save anything that we don't like about the line art, right? Just like a logo, the black solution needs to be complete on its own. So think of it like a good coloring book, right? Is it interesting? Does it have the shapes and the textures that you like? And it's worth taking the time to get that right. Whether you're inking it in Photoshop or in Illustrator. All right, so I'm almost done now doing all of this line art. And then we talked about how we use the blob brush for it, and then we use the small select. This is within Illustrator. And the pencil tool, bless you. We got Kleenex up here to clean it up. Now, one thing I like to do before I finish is to merge everything. So this is, let's see, I think I have a stray mark over here. Let me check it. Sure enough. 